this video we will review some facts about New Hampshire. But before we start, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. In 1774, New Hampshire was one of the original 13 colonies to revolt against British control. They later became the first state to establish its own government and join the Union. These 50 New Hampshire facts will help you learn more about this great state. The state of New Hampshire has its own anthem. It's called Old New Hampshire, and Dr. John Holmes wrote the lyrics in 1926. Later that year, musician Morris Hoffman wrote music to accompany the text. In 1941, the New Hampshire General Court, ironically, prevented the song's designation as the state song. The General Court then blocked a potential path for the song to become the official song once more in 1943. It accomplished this by defeating a measure in the state Senate that would have held a public contest with a monetary award for the people to choose a state song. It wasn't until 1949 that the General Court decided to make Old New Hampshire the official state hymn. Other honorary state anthems were added over the years, with Old New Hampshire receiving a second vote in 1977. It also contains a number of state icons. For starters, the red-spotted newt is the state amphibian of New Hampshire, and the purple finch is the state bird. The state butterfly is the Kana blue, the state dog is the Chinook, and the state flower is the purple lilac. New Hampshire has two state fish species, one freshwater and one marine. The state's freshwater fish is the brook trout, while its marine fish is the striped bass. The official insect of New Hampshire is the ladybug, the state animal is the white-tailed deer, and the state tree is the white birch. The pumpkin is the state fruit, the white potato is the state vegetable, and the blackberry is the state berry. New Hampshire has a distinct geographical landscape. For starters, the state boasts the smallest ocean shoreline of any U.S. state, at only 29 kilometers. Some sources suggest inconsistencies, resulting in even shorter readings of the ocean shoreline of 21 kilometers. The White Mountains also traverse across New Hampshire's north-central region. These mountains are frequently subjected to hurricane-force gusts and lack dense forest cover to buffer up the wind. It has a reputation for having some of the world's worst weather, prompting hikers to perish in the mountains. The state is also traversed by several rivers, including the Merrimack and Connecticut rivers. The latter runs south from Lake Connecticut, which is strangely located in New Hampshire, before entering Connecticut. The Connecticut River also defines New Hampshire's western boundary, as well as its eastern border with Vermont. Mount Washington may be found in New Hampshire. At 1.92 kilometers in height, it is the state's highest mountain. It also forms part of what is known as the Presidential Range of the White Mountains, so named after previous U.S. presidents. Mount Washington is also notorious for its harsh weather, with wind gusts exceeding 300 kilometers per hour. This makes it the strongest recorded wind in the United States outside of tornadoes or hurricanes. Despite the weather, hikers frequent the peak, which is part of the Appalachian Trail. The Mount Washington Cog Railway also runs along the mountain's western slopes. Similarly, the Mount Washington Auto Road traverses the mountain's eastern slopes. The Old Man of the Mountain formerly existed in New Hampshire as well. The human face on Cannon Mountain, near Franconia, was formed out of five granite ledges. When viewed from the north, the ledges resembled the contour of an elderly man's face. It was 12 meters long and 8 meters wide and stood 370 meters above Profile Lake. It was first seen in 1805, and it immediately became a tourist destination and cultural landmark for the state. Unfortunately, the old man of the mountain collapsed in 2003 due to erosion. The idea to recreate the formation was met with criticism from the state administration and other groups. However, images of the old man of the mountain may still be found on license plates and other locations around New Hampshire. Lake Winnipesaukee is New Hampshire's biggest lake. The lake is located in the state's lakes region, at the foot of the White Mountains. It has a total area of 180 square kilometers, a length of 34 kilometers, and a width of 15 kilometers. The lake is 55 meters deep at its deepest point. The lake was named after the Winnipesaukee tribe, a subtribe of the larger Penacook Native Americans. Aquedocton, the settlement on the lake, is now known as the Weirs, after the fishing weirs that drew the interest of European colonists when they first arrived. The lake itself dates back to the last ice age, with its water being a residue of the glaciers. Mount Monadnock in New Hampshire is famous in its own right. It is named after the geographical occurrence Monadnock, which occurs when a mountain emerges as erosion reveals a resistant rock in the surrounding environment. Mount Monadnock is a prime example of this occurrence. 
Mount Monadnock stands 966 metres tall and is located between the villages of Jaffrey and Dublin. It is also known as one of the most climbed mountains in the world. The mountain's stark higher slopes are another distinguishing characteristic. This was created by a wildfire that started between 1810 and 1820 as farmers attempted to remove the mountain's vegetation. Instead, the fire raged uncontrollably, burning the topsoil and rendering it unfit for plant life. The state is traversed by the Appalachian Trail. In reality, approximately 259 kilometers of the path travel through New Hampshire. The majority of the path runs through the White Mountains, with the Appalachian Trail Conservancy stating that New Hampshire has the most trail above treeline of any state. It also makes for some of the trail's most demanding sections, particularly while crossing over Mount Washington. Mount Washington, as previously stated, has a reputation for particularly terrible weather. Other significant peaks on the path include Mount Pierce, which is located to the north of Mount Washington, and Mount Madison, which marks the trail's northern terminus in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, there are several nature reserves. The White Mountain National Forest is the most well-known in the state, as it encompasses the Presidential Range as well as the majority of the White Mountains. The Appalachian Trail in New Hampshire also travels through the National Forest. Other reserves include the Great Bay National Wildlife Reserve, which is located in New Hampshire's Great Bay near the town of Newington. The reserve was established in 1992, a year after Pease Air Force Base was closed. The region was originally used for weapon storage by the U.S. Air Force. Today, the reserve is home to a variety of animals, including the bald eagle, beavers, otters, porcupines, and even turkeys. New Hampshire and Maine have fought over their shared borders. The dispute is over Seavey's Island on the Piscataqua River. The island was formerly made up of five different islands, which created between 1800 and 1866 as part of large-scale land reclamation works. Today, it is home to the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, which constructs and maintains many of the U.S. Navy's nuclear submarines. The conflict arose over Maine's collection of income taxes from shipyard employees, many of whom live in New Hampshire. In 1977, New Hampshire accused Maine of taxing without representation. Decades of legal disputes followed, with the U.S. Supreme Court finally ruling in Maine's favor in 2000. The climate of New Hampshire is humid and continental. This results in hot, humid summers but freezing, snowy winters throughout the state. Rainfall is evenly distributed across the state and throughout the year, with New Hampshire receiving an average of one meter of rain and snow every year. Summer temperatures range between 24 and 28 degrees Celsius, while winter temperatures range between 0 and minus 15 degrees Celsius. This, however, only pertains to the plains. The highlands have their own set of temperatures. Temperatures can drop to minus 44 degrees Celsius in the winter and never rise beyond 13 degrees Celsius in the summer. In the winter, the northern areas of the state may suffer extraordinary lows of up to minus 18 degrees Celsius. The state was the site of one of the first fights of the American Revolution. The capture of Fort William and Mary, currently known as Fort Constitution. Originally erected by the British as part of their fortifications in British North America, it became a target for American patriots at the commencement of the Revolutionary War. Patriots from Portsmouth attacked the fort on December 14, 1774, led by John Langdon. 
the fort fell swiftly, manned only by six caretakers, with patriots grabbing the gunpowder stored within. They then dispersed the gunpowder to militias in neighboring towns. The next day, December 15, additional patriots commanded by John Sullivan came and took the fort's cannons. Not only was this one of the first fights of the American Revolution, but it was also the only combat fought in New Hampshire. Nicholas Gilman, the first president of the United States, was born in New Hampshire. Gilman worked with the 3rd New Hampshire Regiment as an administrative officer. In that job, he demonstrated his ability to make the most of limited resources, particularly labor. This, among other elements, contributed to the 3rd New Hampshire Regiment being one of George Washington's greatest regiments in the Continental Army. The regiment escaped capture by the British after the fall of Fort Ticonderoga in 1777, and the following year fought in the pivotal battles of Saratoga, which ended in an American triumph. Gilman and the regiment were among the American soldiers in the Battle of Yorktown, which effectively ended the British war effort. Following the war, Gilman represented New Hampshire in the Continental Congress, which led to his signature on the U.S. Constitution on behalf of the state in 1787. Alan Shepard comes from New Hampshire as well. Alan Shepard, born in 1923, made history in 1961 when he rode Freedom 7 into space, becoming the first American to do so. He provided ground assistance for subsequent Mercury program missions and even became the chief astronaut for the subsequent Gemini program. However, the emergence of Menier's disease delayed Shepard's return to space. He ultimately succeeded in 1971, when he landed and walked on the moon as the captain of Apollo 14. Shepard continued to serve as chief astronaut after his return to Earth, retiring in 1974. By that time, U.S. President Richard Nixon had advanced him to Rear Admiral, making him the first astronaut to hold that rank. Dan Brown, a well-known author, is also from New Hampshire. Dan Brown, who was born in 1964, is best known for his works, particularly the Da Vinci Code. In this tale, the characters must solve a 2,000-year-old mystery while fending against foes who want to stop them. Finally, they find the truth, which is hidden in Leonardo da Vinci's masterpieces such as the Mona Lisa. The story point of Jesus Christ's biological offspring with Mary Magdalene in particular. Dan Brown used similar themes in his subsequent works, such as Angels and Demons. This not only made him famous, but also a source of contention. Critics have also criticized him for his statements regarding the veracity of his study, despite expert evidence to the contrary. They contend that Brown's activities harmed historical sources' credibility and aided the propagation of conspiracy theories. St. Gordon's National Historic Site is located in the state. The grounds comprise the gardens, residence, and workshops of Augustus St. Gordon's, an American artist who lived from the late 1800s through the early 1900s. From 1885 until his death in 1907, St. Gordon's lived on the grounds, which also served as the hub of the Cornish art colony. They were a group of artists and intellectuals who lived together because they shared interests. The commune continued to exist after Saint Death, Gordon's only to disintegrate during World War I. Augusta Saint Gordon oversaw the property until her death in 1926, when it was taken up by the Saint Memorial. Gordon's it was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1962 and was recognized by Congress in 1964. 
Finally, in 2019, it was designated as a National Historic Park. Concord, the state capital, has its own history. Before Europeans arrived, Native Americans lived on the location for millennia, mostly through fishing and farming near the Merrimack River. Between 1725 and 1727, pioneers headed by Ebenezer Eastman were the first Europeans to colonize the region. The hamlet was renamed Rumford in 1734, only to be renamed Concord in 1765. The name was derived from an agreement reached by Governor Benning Wentworth with the adjacent town of Bow. Concord's strategic location in the area made it the obvious option for a state capital following the American Revolution. In the 19th century, the city became a major supply of construction stone as well as a key railway center. Today, the city is a key hub for healthcare and other service sectors. Franklin Pierce, the 14th President of the United States, is buried in Concord. Pierce was born in New Hampshire and previously served in the United States Congress. As President of the United States from 1853 to 1857, Pierce fought to keep the federal bureaucracy out of party politics while balancing the Democratic Party's internal issues. He failed at the latter, and as a result, many members of his party became his political adversaries. Pierce also purchased Mexican land, which he later added to Arizona and New Mexico, and formed trade relations with Britain and Japan. Pierce's support for maintained and even increased slavery in the West, on the other hand, lost him the support of the northern states. He also got engaged in the Ostend Manifesto, which effectively threatened Spain with war over Cuba. This, among other things, led to the Democratic Party's refusal to nominate him for re-election in 1856. Historians typically rank him as one of the weakest and least memorable U.S. presidents. Manchester, New Hampshire's largest city, has its own history. Native Americans lived on what would become Manchester long before Europeans arrived, as they did in Concord. Pioneers headed by John Gough III established the settlement in 1722, and others arrived in 1727. They named their colony Tingstown after their leader, William Ting, who was a veteran of Queen Anne's War. In 1751, it was renamed Derryfield, and again in 1807. Following the construction of large waterworks on the Merrimack River, the final name occurred. These waterworks were built as part of the city's substantial industrial boom and represented the city's goal to emulate its British namesake, which was then a prominent hub of the Industrial Revolution. The city expanded during the 19th and early 20th centuries until beginning to deteriorate in the 1920s. World War II resulted in a comeback of the city's industry, which afterwards declined. During the American Civil War, a New Hampshire regiment rose to prominence as one of the Union's best. Colonel Edward Cross commanded the 15th New Hampshire Volunteer Infantry. During the war, they engaged in nearly 20 battles, including the pivotal Battle of Gettysburg in 1863. This earned him the moniker Fighting 15th, as well as the bleak reputation of having the greatest mortality rate of any Union unit during the war. The regiment also took part in the war's final fight, the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse. This also ensured that the regiment was there when the Confederacy eventually surrendered, effectively ending the Civil War. The regiment was dissolved in June and July of 1865, towards the end of the war. The state's population is likewise diversified. In fact, women outnumber males in New Hampshire, 
However, whites continue to constitute the great majority of the population, 98%. Having said that, New Hampshire has the highest proportion of French Americans of any American state, at 23%. Irish Americans are in second rank with 21%, while Anglo Americans are in third place with 17%. An estimated 65% of the state's population is between the ages of 18 and 60, with 22% under the age of 18. Finally, the final 14% of the state's population is over 60 years old. The same is true for the faiths of the state. People who identify as irreligious account for 36% of the population in New Hampshire. Protestant groups stand in second with 30%, followed by Roman Catholics with 26%. Mormons and Jews are the smallest religious denominations in New Hampshire accounting for less than 1% of the population. The state is also known for being the least religious in the United States, with only 54% of residents believing God exists in some form or another, according to a 2010 poll. In comparison, the remainder of the U.S. population believes God exists at a rate of roughly 70%. According to the poll, just 23% of New Hampshire residents consider themselves to be highly religious. Textiles were formerly the backbone of the state's economy. Despite its strong support for the Union, New Hampshire had substantial pre-war ties with the states that subsequently became the Confederacy. Cotton and other fabrics were brought in from the South to supply the New Hampshire manufacturers. Prior to the conflict, this meant that many slaves resided in the state and worked in the industries. Textiles dominated the New Hampshire economy throughout the 19th and early 20th century. The Great Depression, on the other hand, wiped out the textile sector. The textile sector now accounts for barely 2% of the state's revenue. Instead, the electronics industry has dominated New Hampshire's economy, aided by Cold War defense contracts with the U.S. military. New Hampshire has a well-developed infrastructure network. Interstates 89, 93, and 95, as well as U.S. routes 1, 2, 3, and 4, all pass through New Hampshire. New Hampshire also has its own state runways, the most prominent of which are New Hampshire routes 16 and 10. The state also contains 25 airports, the most prominent of which being Manchester Boston Regional Airport and Londonderry Airport. Amtrak also operates in New Hampshire, with the Vermonter and Downeyaster lines offering intercity bus service on a regular basis. Other intercity bus services are provided by 11 public transportation bodies. A railway network also runs from Boston and northern Massachusetts into New Hampshire, with plans to extend service to the whole state. It also has an excellent educational system. It dates back to the 19th century, when the first public schools in New Hampshire opened in Portsmouth in 1827. Today, New Hampshire has over 80 public schools, many of which educate kids from various communities. There are also at least 30 distinct private schools in the state. New Hampshire also boasts at least 60 colleges and universities. The state takes part in a variety of sports. College football is played at several New Hampshire colleges. Dartmouth Big Green and New Hampshire Wildcats are both NCAA Division I teams. The former is part of the Ivy League, while the latter is part of the America East Conference. The Franklin Pierce Ravens, St. Anselm Hawks, and Southern New Hampshire Penmen are among the NCAA Division II teams. New Hampshire also has a women's football team, the Northeast Ruckus.
The Nashua Silver Knights, New Hampshire Fisher Cats, and New Hampshire Wild are the state's three baseball teams. They also play rugby for the Amos Gerg Rugby Club and soccer for the Seacoast United Phantoms. New Hampshire has a diverse cultural heritage. The state has a springtime ritual involving sap homes, where individuals collect maple sap to make maple syrup. Before sugaring off or beginning the collecting and syrup making process, open house activities are held. In New Hampshire, county fairs such as the Hopkinton State Fair are held. Summer camps abound in the state's lakes region, with the largest clustering around Lake Winnipesaukee. New Hampshire also has a theatre legacy, with Tamworth's Barnstormers Theatre having been in operation since 1931. Other state traditions take occur throughout the winter, such as the construction of bob homes on frozen lakes. New Hampshire is home to the world's largest video gaming arcade. Fun spot, namely, in the city of Laconia. It has more than 500 video games, pinball machines, and even ticket redemption devices. To enhance the experience, the arcade's attractions are entirely from the 1970s and 1980s. There's also a mini golf course and a 10-lane bowling alley with 10-pin and candlepin bowling. A bar, bingo, and restaurant are also available. There is also a museum dedicated to the history of video gaming arcades in the United States. Guinness World Records recognized the arcade as the world's largest arcade museum in 2008. New Hampshire is likewise an alcoholic beverage control state. This indicates that the state government controls the sale of alcoholic beverages. While the state licenses those who can sell it, they can only get supplies from state-approved sources. This category includes 17 different U.S. states. Supermarkets and convenience shops in New Hampshire are normally licensed to sell beer and wine. However, only state-operated liquor stores are permitted to sell booze, with just a few private establishments ever receiving a license to do so. When it comes to elections, the state has a bad image. For one reason, state law requires that the primary election be held a week before those in other states. This is the first primary of the four-year presidential election cycle in the United States. Furthermore, being the first primary for the U.S. general election, this inevitably has an impact on elections around the country. Undecided voters, in particular, are watching New Hampshire's election results and may vote accordingly. Towns with less than 100 persons in New Hampshire may also hold elections at midnight. These include, among others, Dixville Notch and Hart's location, all of which cast the first votes in U.S. general elections. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel since we will be covering a lot of similar content in the future. Till next time, stay curious.